Welcome to our weekly three-minute therapy podcast. I'm Dr. Michael Edelstein. I'm a clinical psychologist with an international practice on Zoom, and I teach rationally motivated behavior therapy, which I learned from Albert Ellis. And the basic idea here is that our emotions don't come from situations. They come from our thinking about those situations. And it's our demands in our thinking that causes our emotional problems, demands such as, because I prefer to do well and get your approval, I absolutely must. Because I prefer you treat me well, you absolutely must. And because I prefer life go well, it absolutely must. And when we uh, believe in must, we create emotional problems for ourselves. I'm here with my podcast partner, Mick Berry, uh, who always makes a good contribution, and our tech engineer, Chris Rossini, who uh, is in the background holding things together. So uh, let's get started. And uh, today we're going to be discussing Buddhism. And REBT has a lot to agree and disagree with on Buddhism. And the heart of Buddhism can be expressed in the four noble truths. And the four noble truths are as follows. There is suffering. There is a cause of suffering. There is an end to suffering. And there is a way to end suffering. So those are the four noble truths. So uh, there is suffering. If we think of suffering as emotional disturbance, and Buddhism includes a lot more, but our expertise is in the area of emotional disturbance, uh, we would agree that people are emotionally disturbed. Um, just about everyone has some disturbance like stress, anxiety, anger, guilt, and many others. Uh, did you want to say anything more about uh, the first noble truth, there is suffering, Nick? Well, I wanted to just say that people are suffering emotionally, but to varying degrees. Some people minimally, some people maximally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great addition. Thanks, Mick. Then uh, the second noble truth is the cause of suffering. Now we start to veer away from Buddhism because Buddhism... Uh, Actually, no, we uh, actually we don't. I was jumping ahead to the third truth. Uh, we also agree with uh, Buddhism that there is a cause of suffering. Um, so, uh, but we disagree about what the cause is. Uh, Buddhism says that the cause of suffering is desire and wants that can't be satisfied. But we disagree. It's demands that can't be satisfied that causes emotional disturbance, that type of suffering. It is not uh, just desire or wants. Uh, Mick, did you want to add to that? Yeah, now I forget what I was going to say, but <clears throat> I do agree with you. We do disagree on that. Oh, I just wanted to say we are equating suffering with anxiety anger, depression, that's what we're equating suffering with. If we say there is suffering, we're saying there is mental disturbance, which it manifests in, <clears throat> or which is reflected in anxiety, anger, or depression. Yes, yes. And uh, part of the cause of suffering that Buddhism doesn't seem to deal with is um, our genetic predispositions and our imperfect brains. So because our brains are imperfect, it easily uh, leads to us having emotional disturbance. The third noble truth is uh, there is an end uh, to suffering. And it says that the main ends of suffering are death. And I agree with that and spiritual enlightenment. Now, spiritual enlightenment, according to Buddhism, is nirvana, 
or uh, getting rid of the self, reversing egocentric forms of thinking and beha behaving. Uh, but REBT disagrees again because the end of suffering is getting rid of demands. And, uh, and it's important to have self-centered thinking in the sense that you want to establish your goals and you want to work toward your goals in life. And if you get rid of the self, there's no you to have goals. So it seems to me that leads to aimlessness. Mick? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> we do disagree. If you're thinking about nirvana, uh, I have been involved with a group, which I won't name, that had uh, the idea of reaching enlightenment. And the thing about this is it's a great way to really drive yourself crazy because we hear about people that have achieved enlightenment. I've never seen it in this group that I was involved in that I was involved with a great deal talked about it, but there wasn't one person that would claim they were enlightened and they had all of these ideas about what it was and how it was achievable, but nobody ever achieved it. And so it's a great way to drive yourself nuts. REBT says we don't try to be perfectly rational. We simply aim for <clears throat> reasonably so to where we're highly functional and we don't expect ourselves to never experience any anxiety whatsoever. Exactly. And I'll name the group that Mick uh, was. No, I, I prefer if you did. Oh, OK. And why is that? Uh, I don't want to bring them into this. I don't want to end up <clears throat> having to argue with people of that particular group. I also want to avoid lawsuits. Oh, okay. okay. Good, good thinking. <laughs> right thinking. And uh, uh, the um, fourth noble truth is not only there's an end to suffering, but how to end suffering. And uh, Buddhism refers us to another itemized list, and that's the Eightfold Path. And that consists of right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. And REBT disagrees with that. The end of emotional suffering is by questioning, challenging, and contradicting your, your demands, giving up your musts and shoulds, supposed tos and have tos, because that, as we see it, is the cause of suffering. Nick? Yeah, I wanted to clarify. It isn't, I think you said the end of suffering is <clears throat> questioning your demands. It isn't just questioning, it's reducing and eliminating your demands. Now you want to eliminate them permanently, but you can reduce them a great deal. Once in a while, one could crop up and then you eliminate that. But so it's not just questioning, but it's effectively questioning to the point that you reduce them, you actually reduce them and you extinguish them and they pop up again, but you extinguish them. But it isn't like it's that difficult. You become better and better at doing it and becomes easier and easier to extinguish your demands when they arise. We are all fallible human beings. We are demand making machines. However, we can become much more skilled at reducing and eliminating our demands. So it is not disruptive in our life, life really much at all. Okay, very good. And. Uh... One of the things to keep in mind when you're reducing your demands is questioning them meaningfully, vigorously and passionately, and persistently. Again and again and again, it's really a lifelong discipline because our brains easily escalate our preferences into demands. Okay, did you... Uh, to wrap it up, Mick, did you have a final word here? Yeah, yeah, I want to say it's important to remember that we can be demanding about giving up our demands and that's something we want to avoid because i've seen several people say rabt doesn't work but what they're doing is demanding it has to work right now i must not make demands and they don't realize they're being demanding about giving up their demands which is one of the principles of rebt we do not demand to get rid of our demands we work to get rid of them and we want to get rid of them. We like desire, we don't like demands. Desire is good, 
demands are self-defeating. The trick is the stronger our desire, the easier it is to flip it into a demand, but we still advocate very strong desire. With practice, you can keep your strong desires as strong desires, not turn them into demands. Live an exciting, happy, joyful life in which you're able to engage in your passions and not disturb yourself. Well said, well said. And uh, to wrap it up, I just want to mention that today is Albert Ellis's birthday, our founder, and so happy birthday, Al. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please comment below uh, if you have any thoughts about it. Suggest subjects if you have topics you'd like us to delve into. Give us a like, thumbs up, volunteer to be a guest on our podcast. In, in a couple of weeks, we have a guest coming on. Donate to Patreon to help support us and subscribe to the 3-Minute Therapy Podcast to stay on the rational side of life.